10 or 15 by Aeschylus. That's it. Not up Aeschylus, by Euripides. And uh, of course, the Iliad and the Odyssey, they're not quite as good as the Greek tragedy, I don't think. I don't think the Odyssey is that good. You know, it's, it's cute, but I don't think it's great. The Iliad is pretty great, yeah. Is Agamemnon the guy that led the the war against Troy, yeah, according to the Homer. But, you know. but those wars in Northern Troy, those Mediterranean, um, by the way, Troy is supposed to be a Hittite civilization fortress. Because the Hittites were in control at that point of Asia Minor, what we now kind of call Turkey. They were pushed south somehow by all this. The remnants of them ended up in, like, Davidic allies somewhere in Transgeorgia or someplace. And that's where these poems come from. Anyway, I can't do all of history for you, but I just tell you that that's what you have remnants of here. So, um, Abraham's stories have Philistines in them. And we're talking about Ahmadinejad and Palestinian history. Well, I already told you in Arabic, Palestine is Philistine. In other words, in Arabic, they are calling the land the land of the Philistines. The, the Palestine, Palestinian in Arabic is Philistine. Philistine. The Philistines. Well, that's, of course, ludicrous because they're not Philistines. Well, they may be. They may be. They don't think they're Philistines anyway. Culturally, they may be. I don't know. But uh, genealogically, they don't think they're Philistines. They think they're sons of Ishmael. But I told you, everything gets confused when you get to real history. So I can't tell you what the natives on the coast of Lebanon and Palestine really are. But in any case, the name Palestine became applied in the Roman period after the Jewish presence was obliterated in the war against Rome, 66 to 70, and 132 to 136, the Barcopa uprising. At that point, the area was called Palestina by the Romans, harking back to the Greco-Roman Latin tradition of the Greeks on the coastline. The Greeks landed on the coastline in around 1200, 1100 BC after the Egyptians defeated them in a naval battle, which we have records of in Egyptian uh, painting wall paintings under Ramesses III. And he's got actual pictures of the battle with the sea peoples. We can see their uniforms, their feathered headdresses, their crazy, wild looking crazies. Uh, but, um, they defeated the uh, Egyptians defeated them at sea with bows and arrows and ships uh, off of the coast of Egypt, and they went up the coast of Palestine and settled there. A lot of them. And that is the Philistines later in the Davidic in the Davidic period, the, the period of the Davidic monarchy, 1900 BC, and then the divided monarchy later on. The Philistines are pretty successful. Uh, the Philistines are uh, technologically superior to the Hebrews. Hebrews uh, and the Israelites are hill peoples in Palestine. We know from archaeology that the, uh, the Philistines are what we call an Iron Age people. The Israelites and the Hebrews are Bronze Age. That is, they've only mastered bronze metallurgy. They haven't yet mastered iron metallurgy. The Mycenaeans have mastered my iron, uh, uh, iron metallurgy. That's why they have chariots. They have iron wheels on the chariots that can run up and down the flat areas of the coast. That's why David it can't be very successful against them, and Saul, and so on. Okay, so that's a later period. But anyway, so we're coming down now to the Abraham period. Again, we have stories about Abraham, uh, which I said, I don't know how historical Abraham is. There is one story about Abraham in the Bible, in case you're interested, which I think is historical. And the only actually really kernel that they have to work off of. I don't know if I can find it for you uh, because my Bible is so completely marked up, I can't ever find anything. Um, it is. Uh, oh God. Where is it? Where is it? I can't find it. It's when Abraham pursues Lot's, uh, where Abraham, oh, here it is, chapter 14, the campaign of the four kings. Chapter 14, 1 to 16. That is clearly, it's 
totally different from the rest of Genesis. The names are totally different. You don't have a Bible, so you can't see it in front of you, but if you had it in front of you, you can see that that is totally different than the rest of Genesis. Look at this. It was in the time of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Ario, king of Elisar, Bera, king of Sodom, Birsha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, Shembaber, king of Zeboim, and the king Bela, that is Zoar. None of these names are ever spoken of before or after. And the precision of this is very high. Uh, they defeated the Rephaim and Ashtarot Karnaim, the Zuzim and Ham, the Emim and the Pla But all this is in like three or four or five lines. And uh, at Ham, the Emim and Kiryatim, the Horites and the Mountain districts of Seir there, uh, as far as El Paran, which is on the edge of the wilderness, wheeling around, they came to the spring of judgment, Kadesh. Conquered all the terror of the Amalekites, uh, also the Amorites who lived at Hazazan Tamar, then the kings of Saddam and Gomorrah. This is old even when the narrator puts it down here. This is old. This is very old. Even the narrator doesn't understand it. He's just recording it, or she's just recording it. Now, you won't get this in a church or a synagogue because they're not interested in studying the Bible historically. They want spiritual inspiration and order in their modern lives. They're not interested in the period then for accuracy. They think they are, but they really aren't to any great extent. Because if you saw this, you could see, even I at Dumbo, at little training when I first started hearing these things, could see this is not like any other text in all of Genesis and the rest of the Bible. Why? Presumably, it's from a steely. What's it? I thought the other was an old song. What's a steely? It's, a, it's an old stone marker with a, a, a commemoration plaque on it. This would be a commemoration plaque of some kind for some event that happened even way before the person who's writing here knows about. And I think this is actually the kernel of Abraham's story because at the end of this, he says. Line uh, 13, a survivor came to tell Abram the Hebrew, who was living at the oak of the Amorite Mamre, the brother of Eshcol and Anner, these were allies of Abram, oh, we wouldn't have known it except for this. Abram is called Abram the Hebrew. Well, that's the first reference to anyone called Abram the Hebrew in the Bible. We have Abraham and stuff. Abram the Hebrew, whoever called him 